If you click this video, you most likely set the goal to learn more about food and how it fits into your lifestyle. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over my macros changed, now what? And really talk through what to do when your macros do change. And you can use this whether your food is increasing or decreasing, but since we are doing this Leaner Together series, this is gonna be mostly based in dieting. If you guys do want specific examples for if you are bulking, then comment down below and we'll make sure that we make a video for it. So what is the best way to adjust your food, especially if you have a busy lifestyle? Let's go ahead and break it down. One of the first things I do if my macros change is write it down. I know that this seems like such a simple one, but there's so many different things swirling around in our lives and heads every single day. And I have definitely forgotten what my macros are or what they are if they've recently changed. So I either change them in my fitness pal or I go ahead and write them down in some place easily accessible like the notes app on my phone. The next thing I do here is figure out what my favorites are. What I mean by this is since this is lifestyle, we wanna be able to think about what's sustainable, what's maintainable, what's realistic, and what you freaking like and enjoy. The way that you're gonna be able to sustain or maintain something is there has to be a level of enjoyment. So I'm always looking at what meals do I love? And that's where I'm going to keep things the most same and be able to change those meals maybe I don't like that much or I just don't care for in the grand scheme of things. An example of this is my first two meals. I don't always eat those as meal one and meal two, but I often do. And they are my two favorite meals as far as enjoyment goes. They digest great and they are phenomenal for pre and post workout. So I can always keep those in my rotation, even if they aren't just meal one and meal two. And those are normally the meals that I pull from last when I'm going about changing. So if you absolutely love a meal, keep it in there and keep on eating it. And that's gonna lead me to looking at the things that you don't like as much and taking your schedule into consideration. The first time that my macros moved, I didn't change anything at all between meal one and meal two. But then I went ahead and I took a look at my schedule. So most recently my macros have changed and they've gone down again. So I really took a look at where I was running into hurdles or issues with my food. And I've talked about it, but one thing I'm really trying to nail down is my meal timing. And it ends up that I'm trying to finish up my work so I don't wanna take a break for a meal when it comes to that meal three time frame, And I end up pushing myself to finish work. Then I'm stuck eating meals late at night, then I'm staying up later, it's messing up my digestion, it's just not fun for anyone involved, myself most of all. So it's looking at, hey, are there two meals that are coming really close together? Or is there a meal I just really don't care for? Or has my schedule changed recently and maybe I need to change something to make it a little bit more accessible? A great option here is to go ahead and make it something that I can have while I am working. So I don't have to take the aspect of getting away from my desk, making the meal, eating the meal, chewing it thoroughly, making sure I'm not rushing through the meal, cleaning up, and then trying to get back into a work zone. I can go with something super simple like a protein shake, or a smoothie, and that's something that doesn't take a lot of energy to digest. It's not gonna be hard to digest. You can eat it at your desk, and normally I do recommend for myself and for clients to not spend time eating at your desk, but again, we're really looking at how this fits into my schedule. And if it's either between the option of not eating or having a shake at my desk, I will choose to go ahead and have a shake at my desk. When it gets towards the second half of the day, that's when I have a lot of appointments appointments, meetings, and I have other responsibilities that end up making it difficult to eat a meal. So a smoothie and a shake is also something I can take if I'm going to run errands or if I am in a meeting where again, I don't love having to eat in a meeting, but worst case, best case scenario, I can grab something like a shake. So let's say you have your new macros, 
You've found your favorite meals, you haven't touched those. You've taken a look at some meals that maybe you don't care for or don't fit into your schedule. You've rearranged those, but still, because your macros have lowered, you're not hitting them. So I go with easy swaps first, because it's much easier to make a small change to the amounts in a meal than have to completely restructure a whole new meal and try to figure that one out. Some examples of these easy swaps. Rice. I originally started at having 130 grams in my turkey meal. I moved it to 110 and gradually moved it to 90 grams. This allowed me to have a cadence as I decreased it. So it wasn't just taking a meal that had 130 and breaking it down to 60. I was able to make small changes and be able to just take a little bit away from each meal. The pancakes I have every morning have banana in them and it originally started with 70 grams of banana and I've decreased that down to 50 now. Now. Same with the oats and those same pancakes as it started around 35 or 40 grams and I went ahead and moved that to 30 grams. Hash browns, I was eating one and a half servings of hash browns and moved it to one serving of hash browns. Bacon, I was eating three slices. It was center cut bacon, so it was lower fat, but moved that to two slices. And for chips, I was having about three fourths of a serving to one serving, and I moved that to half a serving. So those are some really simple things that you can do of just moving the needle a little bit. Again, we don't need to completely restructure things if we can just make a simple swap. And you'll see here, I didn't say, okay, you're gonna swap rice for cauliflower rice. I still want rice and to be honest with you a lot of dieting hacks like having carbonation chewing gum volume eating or being able to do things like cauliflower rice I actually have a really hard time with those. I do not like carbonation. I do not like chewing gum. And when it comes down to things like cauliflower, they do end up hurting my stomach and you really can't, you can't fool me there. It does not taste the same as rice. Now a good alternative, instead of just swapping jasmine rice for cauliflower rice is doing a blend. And this is another thing that I highly suggest. So maybe you do have 130 grams of rice and maybe you go ahead Ahead and move that to 90 grams and then you put in about 10 or 20 grams of cauliflower rice just to give it some more volume but you're not making it all cauliflower rice where you have this ginormous bowl and then you end up with some distension and some discomfort and then possibly slowing down your results because of your digestion down the road. I'm gonna reset so I got space for the other stuff. One of the next things that I do here, and this especially works for dieting, and since a lot of those other dieting hacks don't help me, is gonna be macro fasting. I have no idea if this term has been used before or if I just made it up on the spot, but I'll go ahead and explain what it means. Normally, I will choose to fast from carbs and fats in a certain meal and make it a primarily protein meal. It is one of the hardest macros to hit, but we can help you out with that. When you only have a finite amount of carbs and fats, it can feel like you don't ever get really satiated throughout the day, and then that's leading to higher hunger because you don't have a more dense meal. So I go ahead and I make my meals more dense of carbs and fats, and I leave one meal with primarily protein. This helps in another part here of it fitting into my schedule better. So I normally don't make just a normal protein shake. I'm definitely not using water, but I'm saying with cashew milk and some Legion protein, of course, but I get pretty bored of those. And again, it's not a lot of food volume. So I like to make a little bit of swap on that and being able to put together a protein smoothie. You can make these by using frozen fruit and ice. And a lot of times I use just ice. So when I use the term macro fasting, it doesn't mean that there's absolutely no carbs and no fats. It's just a meal of primarily protein. So you can push those carbs and fats to other meals as you see fit. Another example of this is going to be fajitas. I love me some fajitas. And this is a great example of a meal that I feel is a whole meal, even without having all of the add-ons. I can be very happy just eating a plate of fajitas without the rice, the refried beans, the tortillas. Just give me the meat and the fajita vegetables and I'm a happy girl. Now this might not be the case for you. I'm just giving an example of what works for me, but being able to implement that into my routine is again a meal of primarily protein, so I can push those carbs and fats to other meals, especially if I do feel like I'm in a pinch with my schedule changing or I'm just in a place where I'm extra hungry that day. 
Now an extra tip to build onto that fajita is being able to have a base meal that you can build off of because we're really talking about lifestyles and busy schedules and with busy schedules, they are subject to change. So for the fajita example, I can just have it with the chicken and or steak with the fajita vegetables and be a happy girl. But I can also add on if maybe my macros were in a different place that day, or even if I had something like a refeed, I can add on rice, tortillas, tortilla chips. If I had cheese, I would add that on. You can add on to that meal and make it even better, but you're still happy with that base core meal. That's even the case for something like my turmeric turkey, where I have that meal and then I also have the tortilla chips alongside of it. So with that, I can either take the tortilla chips away or I can bring the rice and the tortilla chips just back a little so I still can have both. Now I do wanna make it clear that I am not advocating that you just cut out meals and replace them with shakes. One important thing here is a dieting phase is temporary. I know that this isn't the way that I'm going to eat for the rest of forever. So if I'm just doing it for the last few weeks of this diet to help with satiation and adherence, I'm all for it. And like I mentioned earlier, if the choice is either not eating or drinking a shake, drink the damn shake. This is just a technique or a way that you can go about it if you are struggling with your other meals being lower carb and lower fat so that you can have that adherence because it really doesn't matter if it doesn't work for you. This one hurts my heart a little bit, so bear with me as we all go through this. I freaking love snacks. I don't want people taking them away from me, let alone my freaking self. But again, if I look back at my food logs, I see I was grabbing some rice cakes, some rice rollers, some chips here and there. Maybe I was grabbing some cereal or some fruit rolls. And it was primarily in the form of carbs, although of course some of them had fats in them to be able to share the love. But that is one thing about dieting that is a little bit stinky. You gotta get smart with your snacking. So again, another little bonus tip, if you do really miss snacking, I like putting together a snack meal. And really, you just take the macros of your meal and you fill it with different snacks that add up to those macros so that you can have that enjoyment of snacking while still hitting your macros. I also added bars in here, and I do have a little bit of a double-edged sword with something like a Nash bar. You guys know Alex and I absolutely love our Nash bars, but being able to look at the nutrient break down, I could have something possibly more filling than just having a bar. Now the bars are absolutely incredible as far as the ingredients and the convenience, but they are more dense for the amount of volume that you truly get with them. So an example of a meal that you could have instead of that, that might be more filling, is you could have one to one and a half servings of potatoes. And potatoes are primarily carbs, they don't really have fat or protein in them. So that would be able to get to one, one and a half serving for the same amount of carbs that are in a Nash bar. Then you could have any side that you wanted with this when it came to protein. You could have egg whites, chicken, a, you could even have a fattier protein because the Nash bar is 10 grams of fat. So being able to supplement that with a fattier form of protein like a salmon or a steak or you could just add fat with something like a salad dressing or olive oil or peanut butter. If maybe you were going with some sweet potatoes, some chicken, some peanut butter, being able to have a little bit of a sweet treat there. I still do eat Nash bars when I'm dieting, but I am very conscientious of not just grabbing something. And I use the term mindlessly because before I had lower macros, I didn't have to be as intentional about what I was grabbing because I knew that there would be space in my my macros to make it work. Whereas now, if I just grab a snack, oftentimes I'm upset that I grabbed that snack because it was not nearly as filling as I needed it to be and did not give me the energy to be able to sustain the rest of my day. If you've been following along with this Leaner Together series, you know that this was very much so about lifestyle. So one thing we did when building out our macros is allow ourselves to have higher fat than maybe we normally would to allow us that flexibility when it came to going out to eat and being able to move things around. In past dieting phases, my fat has been at that 40 marker for a majority of the diet, where I've kept it above 50 for this whole entire diet. The great part about that is 
if I go out to eat, I can move some things around and have plenty of fat to be able to enjoy going out and grabbing something. But that also means that when I'm at home, I can use that fat just however I see fit. Could be something like having an extra piece of bacon or having the thing that has crack cocaine in it, a midday square, which just hits that sweet tooth every single time. I will add one more that always makes things easier when things are changing, and you already know what it is. I saved this one for last because I know it's the last one that you absolutely want to hear, but when was the last time that you pre-planned and pre-tracked your macros and you didn't hit them? I find that I am much more satiated, I feel much more confident going into the day, and I'm able to take away that decision fatigue if I have things pre-planned. And hey, I get it, life happens. I'm not expecting you to follow the plan perfectly every single day. A plan or a guideline, whatever you want to call it, it's put in place so you have an idea of how things should go or can go, and then you can always pivot from there. Because if you have a plan, if you have a path in place, you can decide where you need to pivot. Where if you have no idea what you're doing, then you can feel pretty dang lost. If your macros have changed recently and you're stuck on what to do, leave a comment down below about what your situation is. I absolutely love helping people, whether it's play macro Tetris or just figure out what works for you. Because like I said, none of this matters at all if you cannot sustain it, if you cannot be consistent with it, and if you cannot adhere to it. So the plan only works if it works for you. Now that Sue has walked you guys through exactly how she she goes about changing her portion sizes when macro adjustments are made. Let's go ahead and dig into some of the adjustments that we saw in week 10. This is another productive week for Sue and I when it comes to physique photos as well as the scale. For the scale, Sue saw a 0.9 pound decrease on average for this past week. I myself saw a change of 1.8 pounds of fat loss on average over this past week. It was extremely productive. One of my goals when we started this diet was to maintain an average fat loss of one to 1.25 pounds per week. At the 10 week marker, I'm just a hair above that 1.25 pound marker at 1.27. This was a week in which we both did not make adjustments to our nutrition or our daily activity. One thing that did change was Sue's training. She went from a metabolic emphasis, which is a shorter rest period with submaximal loads, and is now moving into a hypertrophy phase where she's having more training volume, longer rest periods, and really getting after it within the load selection that she's making. My training as of late has stuck with a strength-based phase, and I'm really getting after it within my load selection as well. My activity has gone up over the past couple of weeks, I forgot to make a note in these videos. My steps went from 8,000 to 10,000, and this has been a big help, as well as me getting more of the biking and playing basketball in place has helped tremendously with getting those new steps in. One question that my clients have asked me throughout this series is that why are you guys not utilizing any prescribed cardio? Now, you doing cardio does not mean that the fat loss that you're trying to achieve is automatically your number one goal. I don't wanna make it sound like all we do is work, but it's kinda true. Um, <laughs> our priority is creating sustainable habits alongside running a very successful business within physique development. Thus, we have opted to have great training sessions, get our yoga in, get our steps in, but we're not utilizing the tool of prescribed cardio. Could we lose more body fat throughout this 12 weeks having done more cardio and made the fat loss the number one priority? Absolutely but that is not our intent with this series. Our intent with this series is to showcase exactly how you can still chase body composition improvements and lose body fat while still living your life and having great days of work, having great dinners and evenings with your family and kiddos and still be able to make the progress that you want to see. Going into this next week, both Sue and I will be seeing a decrease in our macronutrient and total calorie consumption. Sue's training intensity is going to go up with the hypertrophy phase relative to the metabolic stimulus. So there's going to be some account for that. And then she's also going to see a decrease in 15 grams of carbohydrates. So her food is going to move to 150 pro, 
150 carb, and 50 grams of fat. Lots of fives, very easy to remember. When it comes to my food adjustments, we saw a decrease in carbohydrates as well as fats. So my protein is going to stay at 200 grams, my carbohydrates move down to 210, and then my fats go from 63 down to 55 grams. Oftentimes, when individuals see that their macronutrients have been decreased, they feel as though that they've done something wrong that they're having their food taken away because they haven't lost enough weight or they haven't had enough progress. And at times that may be the case, but more often it is simply just a progression to the duration of the diet. You have to get more aggressive to continue to see the results that you desire. Let's take a look at the physique photos and see what differences have been made from our initial photos. Before we dig in, I want to share this with you because I think that many individuals feel similar, similarly. <laughs> when we look at check-in photos, they're fresh out of bed after using the restroom, straight onto the front, to the side and to the back. And these are not my favorite angles of myself. I am not a huge fan of just standing straight on. I like to twist my hip a little bit, find my angle, and I would feel a little bit more comfortable. And that's okay if you feel the same way, because what we're trying to do here is have a standard visual to compare and contrast the differences and improvements that you're making over the diet itself. When we compare Sue's photos, I wanna start with the side profile because this is a photo that has progressed really nicely for Sue over these past few weeks. She has seen a great decrease in body fat to her lower half, as well as seeing a decrease of body fat through her midsection. And it's very visually clear when putting these photos side by side. Another area that Sue has seen great progress is with her back shot. And with her back shot, we're seeing that fat loss being coming off of her lower back as well as her glutes. Something Sue shared with me this past week is that this has been a totally different experience for her of where her body is deciding to pull the body fat from compared to previous dieting phases. This is very common and should not be discouraging, even though you may feel discouraged because you may want to see that body fat coming from other areas, but the reality is is that this is where your body's pulling from right now and you just need to stay the course. In looking at my photos, I wanna start with the front shot. Last week, I had talked about how I needed to work on my tan, and I got a little bit of progress here by wearing some tank tops to play basketball, to ride the bike, going over to Sue's parents' house to swim at the pool. Still needing some work, but we're making progress. In looking at my front shot, I'm seeing better shape to my arms. I've lost body fat off of the back of my arm, which is oftentimes going to be the best thing to happen if you're needing or desiring to have greater tone or shape to your arms as a whole. As I've talked about in previous episodes, I have had a easier experience losing body fat off of my midsection in previous dieting phases. My body is being a little asshole right now and deciding to pull from my stomach last. And I would like to flip the script as soon as possible. I've got two weeks left and I'm hoping to see even greater progress in the weeks to come. The other photos that I would like to look at would be my back shots. And this is where I'm starting to look a little bit more snatched as the kids like to say. <laughs> the body fat on my lower back has come down considerably since the initial photos. And this is something I hope and will continue to see progress in as we complete the diet. The final thing I will leave you with before we get into the wrap up is that to retain the muscle tissue that you work so hard in your maintenance phases and surpluses, to maintain that muscle tissue through a dieting phase is going to come down to your training intensity. If you're looking at our physique photos and saying, how are they retaining the muscle tissue throughout the 10 weeks or at the end of this, at the 12 weeks, it's because we've maintained the training intensity and challenged ourselves to get even stronger during this period. Have we gotten stronger and seeing higher numbers with every exercise that we've performed through through our training session? No, but we have a goal every time that we step in there to beat the log book and that is how we're going to retain the muscle tissue that we work so hard for. This has been a freaking week to say the least and I feel like we come to this every week and we say that but it really does feel that way of a grind and that's why last week we talked about how flipping excited we are to go to St. Bart's and I know I also talked about last week that my goal was to not let sleep slide and I've got some bad news for you guys. 
I let it slide. There were multiple days where it was under six hours and I'm not happy with it, but it is just how the days fell. Of course, I can look back and I can audit and I can be more proactive about that moving forward. And I can report that I have been better and even had some nine hour nights in there, which I am super duper jazzed about. And we got to go and play some more basketball, ride our bikes a little bit more this week. We had a lot going on with work, especially with the band tees coming out and being able to get some more footage for that and be able to work with actually another creative here locally. His name is Cash, and it's been incredible to be able to get to know him uh, and just have someone else uh, in the PD realm, which is always really fun. But that is how the majority of my week went. It was super crazy, not a lot of sleep, even some missed yoga classes that I really wanted to go to. But we did get in some classes, got in some basketball, and got in some sleep. One thing that did go well for me last week and has really gone well throughout the entire diet has been training performance. I think that next week's video, we'll take you guys through and, and talk more in detail about uh, training performance in a dieting phase and, and what to really expect. Because I think that oftentimes people just automatically assume that they're going to get weaker in the process of dieting because I'm so hungry and I have less calories and I'm just, I can't do it. It's too hard. I heard that exact phrase from Gus. <laughs> <laughs> from Gus, look at him. He's freaking out. Um, no, I, I've, I've continued to get stronger. I think that some of the muscle groups that have uh, really excelled throughout this was uh, back training and my leg training has really continued to accelerate. And over this past week, speaking about the banties, speaking about cash, we went and shot some awesome video and pictures having a leg session and uh, got to go to a gym and use some different leg equipment uh, during that session. But also during that session, you're fitting, feeling pretty under the weather. Have you been feeling better recently? Yeah. Um, one of my things that I'm notorious for is that I'll just push myself <laughs> until the wheels actually fall off. And so I will get what we like to call just the exhaustion illness where I have like this minor fever and cold and uh, sore throat, all that kind of stuff, stuffy nose uh, that lasts me about 24 to 48 hours. All I have to do is rest like I should have from the get go. And uh, I generally feel better. So like I said, it doesn't last very long. And uh, we had to train that day and we had it planned and I was not going to not train. Uh, Miguel and Cash knew I only had about three or four solid sets in me that day. And I, I gave everything that I could because when we got back, I ate and I went right to bed. So, <laughs> but it, it was still a fun training session. Uh, not really a gym that I overly enjoyed or plan to necessarily go back to. I love the home gym. It, 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 Every time we go and train somewhere, I'm like, I'm just very grateful that we're training at home on a more regular basis. We just got those videos back from Cash, and it's funny because in them, first you are lifting a ton and you don't look sick. You just kind of ponied up and went and did it, even though I really thought that you weren't even going to survive the first exercise. And I thought that it would be funny if anyone else does, please let me know to go back and especially looking at videos uh, and being able to talk about what our mentality was going into it, because there's so many that I know what happened before we went into film and we just kind of put on our big girl pants our big boy pants. And we said, this is the job at hand. And we didn't brush things under the rug by any means, but it was kind of putting a pause on it, knowing what job needed to be done and doing it and showing up for it. So I think it would be funny to kind of go through some videos and be like, oh yeah, this is what I was thinking going into that day. Or even I know that there's exercise execution videos where I did not feel good, like in my body or just visibly, I didn't feel good. And watching the video, you would have had no idea. And I'm like, oh, I look completely fine. But it's mostly Miguel's editing. <laughs> well, he's not editing my body, but it, it is funny because I will like be very present and I know how I felt that day. And then it's like, oh my gosh, you didn't even have to worry about that. You didn't look bad at all. Well, it's one of the things that we've learned the most from this diet series is like, yes, we're going to lose the body fat and yes, we're going to have the adherence components. But a, a lot of this has just been a disciplinary 
learning experience for all three of us throughout this where we've had a lot of just pony up and do what we need to do and show up and, and show out and be present in the moment and do what we can. And I think that that's been the, the best thing for me because if, if I didn't go through this series and I didn't have this accountability and tried to diet with all the things that I have have had going on throughout this, I probably would have had weeks where it was like, ah, this week was this week was happening. So I didn't track because of X, Y, and Z. I had every opportunity to make an excuse. And so by having the accountability, it has allowed for me to really believe more in myself, believe more in the capabilities that I have. And so I think that that's going to be the biggest thing that I take away from this as we head into the final two weeks here. I always hear your voice echoing in my head of saying efficiency is built from necessity. And through this series, which it'll probably be a little while, we're not jumping into another series because we learned a lot about how much this takes. It was so true of we became more efficient, we became better communicators, and we learned how to work around this because we had to put this in our way to go through it. So if you have any other series you'd like to see from us in the future, then definitely let us know because because we enjoyed this. We will need a little bit of time to recover from it, but it was really fun and a great challenge to be able to get up for all three of us and just show up every single day. Do you have any goals going into this next week? Continue with good sleep. Congratulations. Sure. You've had this for all 12 weeks so far, <laughs> however far we are. <laughs> but it's always a priority. Sleep is for the elite, remember? And I'm trying to be elite out Well, here. if you want to be elite, then you better actually fulfill the goal. I did. Right now, right now, my sleep average is like anywhere from seven and a half to nine. I got an upgrade, guys. I, so the aura ring was pissing me off. The battery life was failing me. Don't I, even get me started on battery life. This is the Apple Watch is way worse with the battery life. My aura ring had two years, and I think that the, the battery was starting to bite the big one. The sensors, I feel like hot yoga may have destroyed the sensors, to be brutally honest with you. I just didn't feel like it was tracking things. I felt like my steps were not correct. And come to find out when I got the Garmin watch and then was also wearing the aura ring for those first couple of days, the steps were definitely off. So I have a, I forget what number this is. It's Four runner, is it two two five or two road five run, five? Is it road runner or four runner? Four runner two five five. Okay. Yeah, two five five. Not the music one, just the regular one, because you guys cared about that. <laughs> yeah, they really did. Uh, but truthfully, this is where my conundrum has come from. So Apple Watch is great because all of my other stuff is Apple, but I'm not like tied to the Apple Watch because I really don't do like the other stuff. I honestly don't even get notifications on this watch. I don't use it for texting or anything. I'll use it if somebody's calling and I have no idea where my phone is. Actually, I honestly forgot my favorite feature of the Apple Watch is the ability to ding your phone, but I've been shamed into not using that. So yes. now that I barely even use the feature that I love the most and this dies like halfway through the day and I'm having it's to trash. charge it halfway through the day when I'm only using it to track my workouts and steps and like my heart rate and all that jazz. And so I did go and look at Garmin's and I tried on a few, but I just don't know what I want because I also have been looking at the Aura Ring for like three years. <laughs> I have not pulled the trigger on it because my fingers swell. And so I don't want to get the ring and then my fingers be swollen and then it be trapped on my hand. But you also can't wear it like while you're lifting weights. And so then it would be beneficial to have the aura ring for especially when I'm trying to look nice because I'm not trying to be a spy kids. Cause again, I've been shamed into not wearing this when I look nice. I would love to have the ring in those instances, but I feel like it's so extra to have the ring and the watch. And I just don't even know. So I am at. Just make a decision. I'm I mean, this is to. an ongoing process. Just just buy one. I, <laughs> I, I have begged to just buy them. I would love for her just to buy the Aura Ring, buy the Garmin oh watch gosh. and be happy. So we don't have to keep talking about being a spy kid and then this thing dying. I got to find which one works for my wrist size because some of them are like I would really like to just big. just buy them all and we'll just we'll just test drive them all and we'll take back whatever you don't end up liking we'll just wear all of them every day oh my gosh we literally went to go look at those Garmin watches and I wanted to look at a pair of shoes and I couldn't decide and they didn't have the color I wanted for the shoes and Alex was like very upset that we went to the store and just bought absolutely if nothing. you would love to just get on my nerves take me to go <laughs> buy something and go shopping and then just look. And then we're like, okay, done. Not gonna buy anything? No, I don't think so. 
Why did we even come here? We could have done this online. Could have looked at the pictures on but the I website. But I need to try on the shoe, and now I knew that I need to go a half up. Size and I ordered the shoes. Okay, congratulations. I don't. I also don't get this from people. Like, just buy the sizes that you think you may be. Try them on at home. Don't like the the sizes that don't fit. Ship them back. It's the same experience, and it's in the comfort of your own home. Are you going to ship them back? Possibly. <laughs> if I buy the same shoe, for sure, I'm going to ship them back. You are. Yeah, but if I buy, you for, have a you're, you're a trying shirt. to roast. You're trying you to roast me right now. Shirt. He has a shirt. He bought two of the same shirt in two different colors. But I like him. And he has been trying to return one. And it's been sitting on the table downstairs See, for over a week. So do not tell me you would a, return it because a shoe box is even harder than a shirt to return. The same pair of shoes and then the same shirt in different colors is a different thing. See, I'm 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 half in, you. half out with the the shipping back of the shirt because I like the shirt. It's just, I mean, do I want black and navy? I think that one's a different size too. No, they're the same size. Okay. Get with the program, girly. <laughs> but shoes are hard to ship back. Whatever. <laughs> That's all we got for you today. We will catch you in next week's video, which is a train with me. And if you're watching this on Thursday, you have six more days until you can grab one of these sick band tees. So make sure you mark your calendar July 19th, noon EST. Now, if you are an email subscriber, you get a little benefit. You actually get one whole day before everyone else. You get early freaking access on the 18th at noon EST. So we cannot wait to get these in your hands. We'll see you soon.